Welcome once again to Heart Mountain from all around the world. This is Heart Mountain Ministries, and I am Pastor Rob Fisk. I am so thrilled that you're going back and the YouTube channel, Heart Mountain Ministries, and you're watching all the different subjects. It's so cool. I see the analytics, and I can see who's watching Sunday's service and the Sunday's worship. And then people are going back even during the week and watching the various subjects that interest you. God bless you. That's what it's all about. It's about learning the Word of God and growing strong in Him. Amen. The book of Revelation says, Greetings to the churches from God the Father, I'll explain in a minute, from Jesus and from the seven spirits. What in the world? First time I read that, I thought, there aren't seven spirits of God, are there? There's only one Holy Spirit. Right. I'll explain in a minute. It's so cool. But first, hang in there. I want to read a couple testimonies again. Here's one from overseas again. Keep up the great works you do. The study, we listen and learn from it. We got it good. Praise God for you. Hallelujah. That's so that's so kind. Thank you very much. It just it encourages my heart. I know I'm doing what God wants me to do and feeding the flock, but it's so nice to have somebody respond in kind. And then one about the praise. Your praise music is so catchy. Whatever I'm doing in the home, I can just put on your praise music and sing along with it. It is so genuine and uplifting praise and just flows well into each song and just enough each time. One day I will teach our church choir kids one of your catchy songs. That would mean the world to be, sis. That'd be great. We'll try to do a kind of version version that is a simplicity and the power that it has in the music is amazing. God bless you and thank you. Hallelujah. So, big question. Can I go to heaven without the Holy Spirit? I wouldn't go downtown without the Holy Spirit. You see, it's not my job to argue doctrine. So many churches have so many ideas about the Holy Spirit. Denominations say this, and theologians say that. It's my job, it's my calling to encourage you to get as much of God as you can. Because you know what? He loves you. The Father loves you. Jesus loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. So you might as well have all that you can of God and receive all of you can. So we're talking about who is the Holy Spirit. So once again, knowing God, the Bible says that all of his precious promises will come to you through the knowledge of him. So we've talked a lot about the Father. We've talked a lot about the Son. It's about time we talked a lot about the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, he's on the move. So, with that in mind, I'm going to give you kind of the two, and not extremes, but the two sides of what people think about who the Holy Spirit is, and, you know, who has the Holy Spirit, who doesn't, etc. So, turn to Romans 8 and verse 9. In the Berean Literal Bible, again, I love this translation. I only found it about a year ago. It's just very uh, excellent. If you read about the Bereans in the book of Acts, they were the ones that studied to make sure that the things that Paul said were true. And he said, great, do it. It's awesome. So, Romans 8 verse 9 It says, now you are not in flesh, but in spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not of him. Read that again. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not of him. I've heard people argue amongst, well, let's, let's, I'll be honest with you, amongst Pentecostal circles, that the fundamentalists, you know, the Baptists and some of the other folks don't have the Holy Spirit. No, 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 that's not true. The Holy Spirit, we just talked about the seven spirits or the seven spirits of God. He manifests seven ways. And one of the ways the Holy Spirit uh, manifests is through the Spirit of Christ. You see, when you ask Jesus in your heart, Jesus doesn't come off the throne with his physical resurrected body and put his foot in your heart at its top. And so when we receive Jesus, I receive you, Jesus, it's the Spirit of Christ. It's the function of the Holy Spirit, one of the seven functions, which I'll explain in a moment, of the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. So if you're born again, you do have the Holy Spirit. Yes, you do. Now, I believe there's more manifestation you can have. And uh, John said that Jesus would baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. So here's the other verse I wanted to mention to you, kind of the other side. 
In the book of Acts chapter 19, we're talking about the 12 men that Paul found in Ephesus. In Acts 19, it says, And it happened, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples, and he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, No, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Wow, can you imagine? I love the Bible. It just, it's just so revealing. And he said unto them, and into what then were you baptized? They said, into John's baptism. And Paul said, well, John baptized with a baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, which is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on him, guess what? The Holy Spirit came upon them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. And there were about 12 men in all. So there it is. When you're born again, you have the Spirit of Christ. And also, there's another, I'll call it an impartation or a filling. And I've been asking you to pray that God fill you or baptize you with the Holy Spirit. You know, don't worry about your denomination. Don't worry about your background. Just get as much of God as you, as you can. In these last days, when it's getting darker, we need as much light and as much power and as much of God as we can get. So let me encourage you to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So before we talk about the seven spirits, real quick, what happens to me when I'm baptized with the Holy Spirit? I'm glad you asked. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Here we go. Jesus said this. It says, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you or the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit will begin to show up when you ask for the infilling of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. All right, let's get to know the Holy Spirit more. Turn to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 4. It says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. Do you see that? Is, was, is to come. You'll see that that's the Father. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne, which is really only one spirit manifest in seven ways, and from Jesus Christ. We'll stop there. Listen, I'm known by at least seven names. <laughs> I'm not seven people. Hallelujah. I think Linda would say hallelujah to that too. But I am father. I'm a son. I'm husband. I'm honey, honeydew. <laughs> I'm brother, I'm pastor, I'm cousin, you see, I'm all one person. So that's how the Holy Spirit is kind of manifest in seven different ways. But there's one Spirit of God, one Holy Spirit, and He is awesome. He's so awesome. Hallelujah. Okay, number one, He is the Spirit of Christ. Let's read that verse again. Romans 8, 9, the Berean literal Bible. Now you are not in flesh, but in spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have what? The Spirit of Christ, he is not of him. So when you're born again, you definitely have the Spirit of God as the Spirit of Christ that joins with your spirit and old things pass away and all things become new. It's awesome. Number two. This is really cool. The Holy Spirit is known as the spirit of adoption. See, I know about adoption. Um, I adopted a daughter so that my first daughter, Carrie, would not be alone in her later years. And I thought, you know, adoption has a kind of stigma, or so I thought. But I got her at one month old. And you know what? She was as much my daughter as Carrie was my daughter. So... <laughs> I know that once you're adopted into a family, you really do become an actual child of the family. So when you're adopted into the family of God, you're an actual son or daughter of the Most High God with full privileges. Adoption is just the method by which you're brought into the family. Romans 8, 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received what? The spirit of adoption. That's the Holy Spirit's second, well, I don't know if it's an order, but it's a second function of the Holy Spirit. 
is to bring you into the family of God and make you a real child, a real son. If you're born again, you're a real son. You're a real daughter of the Most High God. And the Holy Spirit accomplished that in your heart. That's one of his functions. He's a spirit of adoption. Verse 15, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, which means Papa or Daddy. Abba, Father, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are, (laughs) we are the children of God. And this is great, just a little extra. And if children, then we're heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Number three, the Holy Spirit is known as the Spirit of life. This is so cool. Uh, Well, I'll read it for you. Uh, Revelation 11, this is coming in the future. And verse 8, these are the the two prophets that came and did mighty miracles and testified of God. And they were killed, all right? So here it is, Revelation 11, 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the grave. We know that this is at least in the times we live and sometime in the future, because all the peoples of the earth could not have seen those dead bodies without television. So yeah, they'll be seeing their bodies lying in the the street. Verse 10, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt in the earth. But after three days and a half, the what? The Spirit of life, the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit when God breathed into Adam in the beginning and life came into him. The Holy Spirit is also the Spirit of life. Uh, the, The Spirit generally is translated like breath in both the Old and the New Testament. So he is the Spirit of life. So after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying to them, Come up hither. And they ascended up into heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. They saw it. They saw them go. They saw them rise from the dead. They saw them go back up into heaven. Awesome. Awesome. What a day. What a testimony. So here's some more names of the Holy Spirit. We're getting to know him, the awesome, wonderful part of God known as the Holy Spirit. Number four, the spirit of truth. We talked about this last week. Uh, Remember, go back and look, look at last week's. John 14, 16, Jesus said, I will pray the Father and he will give you another paraclete. Another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, standby. But in this translation, I will pray the Father, he'll give you another comforter. He may abide with you forever. Even what? The spirit of truth. That's the Holy Spirit. Check it out. This is so cool. Whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him. He dwells with you and shall be in you. That is so awesome to have the Holy Spirit in you. And check out John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he'll do what? He shall teach you all things. After all, he's the Spirit of truth. And I love this part. He will bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said unto you. So if you studied or you've listened here and learned the scriptures and watch them on the screen and you know meditate upon them and learn them, when you need them most, the Holy Spirit will bring them back to your memory. It is so cool. Check out that verse again. You can go back at the end of the broadcast and read these verses and meditate on them again. You really should. So, the Holy Spirit, number five, is also the spirit of wisdom. I love this one. Ephesians 1.17, it says, Paul said, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation, of course, so that you may know him better. Isn't that an awesome verse? He is a spirit of wisdom. Now, number six, the spirit of intercession. It looks like we're going to make it. All right. Listen fast. <laughs> Romans 8, 26 and 27. We've talked about this concerning the Holy Spirit. It is so cool. Uh, Let's just read it. In the same way, the Spirit does what? 
helps us. That word help, I looked it up in the Greek. It literally means to take hold of together with against. So if I'm asking you to help me move a piano, I'm not asking you to move the piano. I'm asking you to come alongside together with me and push. Okay? That's the same with the Holy Spirit. He helps you to intercede and he also intercedes along with Jesus on the throne. It's a little complicated, but it's, well, no, it's, it's, it's not too bad. So read it again. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we know not how to pray. We know not what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans which words cannot inter- express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So the Spirit helps us to intercede, and he also intercedes. That's actually pretty simple. And that's why he's called the Spirit of Intercession. He's a prayer helper. Learn to let the Holy Spirit help you to pray. And last one, number seven, he is the Spirit of power and of might. Uh, real quick, back in Judges 14.6, it said, Then the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon him, Samson, and although he had nothing in his hand, he tore the lion in pieces as one tears a young goat. Well, I don't know how one tears a young goat. I've never done that. But he did not tell his father or mother what he had done. So the Holy Spirit is a spirit of power. He'll come upon somebody like Samson to help with strength. He'll also help you with power in your spirit. Go back to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and into all the ends of the earth. I got to give you one last verse before we finish this. This is so important. You will, by the way, have power to witness. The Holy Spirit will give you power to witness and he'll give you power to pray and expect God to do wonderful miracles as you pray for people. Check it out. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. I love this. I want this so bad. It says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and what? Power. Dunamis, the same word we get dynamite. And he went about doing good and healing all those who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. I know lots of Christians that are filled with Christians that are filled with the Spirit, but don't have any power. I pray. I, I've seen the Lord do miracles as I prayed, as Linda has prayed, and we give him all the glory. People have been writing in uh in through Facebook and asking for miracles. One lady asked for prayer, we prayed, and the next day she came back, she said, Praise God, my blood pressure is down. I'm not surprised. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I pray that you receive the Holy Spirit, that you receive power, not only to witness, but to do mighty things for the kingdom. These are the last days. God needs his army to rise up. And I believe we're on the verge of a new revival. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Amen. Well, we got it done. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. Father, I pray that the people today would be hungry. Because you said that anybody who hungers or thirsts after righteousness will be filled. Fill them, Father. Fill them with power. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Fill them with your word as they learn. I believe I receive it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Listen, write and testify when some of these good things happen. Uh, I'll just wait and put the uh, the email address at the end. For now, just understand, if you go to heartmountainministries.com, our webpage, it's all there. I realize I don't have to put the email address or the snail mail address or our uh, Twitter address. It's all at the webpage. So I'm just putting up the, the, the webpage site. Now, real important, you guys can help this ministry. And, and this, it's so cool. If you were to click on like and if you were to share with people and especially if you were to subscribe it's so amazing i found out that the more activity that we have and we're getting more activity the more uh youtube takes an interest in us and realize people like this ministry and they make it more and more available so you can help us rise up in the search engines you're helping us spread the word of god i appreciate it if you do that like share subscribe so 
I don't know what the subject will be next week yet, but you know it'll be glorious because the Spirit of God is leading us. And man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Keep coming back. Let's keep studying together. I love you.